Next presenting company is Idrogen and with us we have Anders Karlsson who is the CEO of the company. Welcome Anders and I leave the word to you. Thank you Olivia. My name is Anders Karlsson and I am the CEO of Idrogen. Idrogen is a public company uh, on Nasdaq uh, First North since June. Uh, past year and we have been public since 2015. The company is developing tologenic cell therapy. The agenda for today, uh, I want to give you a short introduction to our technology. Uh, go back and uh, look historically on key activities for 2020, the past year, and then uh, step into our prioritized projects and also talk more about the key activities for this year and ahead. Cell therapy. The definition of cell therapy is that the cell therapy aims to treat diseases by using cells to repair or change other cells in the body. The cells are cultured outside the body uh, and thereafter being injected into the patient. These cells come from the patient in that case, it's called autologous cells or from a donor allogenic cell therapy. Our cell therapy aims to target conditions and diseases when the immune system has become the body's own enemies. It can be cases, for example, anti-drug antibodies when the immune system attacks life-saving life biological drugs and hampers their effect. It can be conditions on and with transplant rejection and also the big, big number of autoimmune diseases when the body attacks its own cells and tissues. And in all these cases, we seek to turn off these unwanted attacks of the immune system. We have a platform technology which is patentable and we have three ongoing projects. The first is IDO8 targeting hemophilia and patients that has developed neutralizing antibodies towards its uh, life-saving uh, treatment with factor 8. Uh, the next one is IDOT, targeting kidney transplantation, and the third is IDOAID, covering a big amount of uh, autoimmune diseases. To give you a short introduction to our technology, the dendritic cells plays a key role in the immune system, and we are using them for our technology. They have the role to sort out different cells and molecules within the body. Here are different uh, cells and molecules that it has to sort out. And as, when it looks like this, it's uh, as it should be. It attacks virus and bacteria and cancer cells, but also tolerates pharmaceuticals, transplants and own tissues and organs. The, the left hand side you see the attack side where the, the body uh, activates immune response. This is the normal way it acts. We are targeting the other side, the regulatory T cells, which are important for creating a long term tolerance. And I will tell you more about that later on. But if it looks like this, when the immune system attacks pharmaceutical transplants and own tissues and cells, then we have a problem. And then we can say that you have a wrongly activated immune system. And our technology aims to instead reset the immune system and reprogram the cells in a way to normalize the immune system. Our technology, our treatment is tailor-made for the individual patient. We harvest the cells at the local hospital. Thereafter, we ship them to our CMP, GMP facility for manufacturing. We take the monocyte, we introduce them to the disease-specific antigen. And for the IDO8 treatment, the disease-specific antigen is factor, the clotting factor 8. 
Then we also add our uh, proprietary tolerance inducer. And then we have created the tolerogenic dendritic cells, which actually is our treatment. Thereafter, we ship it back to the local patient's hospital and inject the patients bi-weekly in three to four occasions. A very important step in the development of our technology was when we decided to outsource the manufacturing of the cell therapy for our clinical trials to Radboud University Medical Center in, in Holland. They are um, world leading in manufacturing and developing cell therapy and they have been in this business for more than 20 years. So we have invented the cell therapy in our facilities. We are moving them a tech transfer to Radboud and thereafter we manufacture in GMP standard. And a very important um, uh, thing with our cell therapy is that we can tra transport it in a frozen state uh, to the hospitals. Key activities. We have a very young IP protection, uh, which is a, a good benefit for the future. We communicated our new tolerance inducer in mid-2019. Thereafter, we agreed with Radboud, uh, the manufacturing uh, agreement, and thereafter we sent in the patent application, the first one in UK. The past year, 2020 was very much focusing on preparing for clinical trial. Uh, we was uh, looking into regulatory discussions. We was also discussing in a lot of discussions with clinical specialists, and we also made the up listing to First North uh, Nasdaq. Our key projects. I start with Hemophilia A and patients that has developed antibodies towards the treatment of clotting factor 8, which is the normal treatment for these patients. This is the standard of care, but in 25 to 30 percent of the patients, they are uh, developing neutralizing antibodies. This treatment uh, has re a relatively high cost for a factor 8 treatment. The cost is around 1 million Swedish kronas a year. Uh, but for replacement therapies for factor VIII, the price is significantly higher. As I said, normal treatment factor VIII, but in some cases that doesn't work. And usually uh, this, this uh, neutralizing antibodies comes with around 25 to 30 percent of the patients. And we aim to reprogram the immune system to tolerize factor VIII and regaining its effect. So you therefore can continue after having this treatment with uh, IDO8. We have made a lot of progress in this, this step. 2019 I talked about, 2020 I talked about, and now in this year we are preparing for clinical trial. We are preparing to send in the clinical trial application and we expect to have an approval to start clinical trial in end this year. Moving into transplantation. This is a very common uh, um, surgery today. Around 90,000 patients globally per year get a new kidney. But these patients also need a lifelong suppressive and, uh, immunosuppressive treatment to reduce the risk for rejections. And uh, these uh, medications also give a risk of uh, other side effects such as cancer, such as infections, but also direct negative effect on the kidney. So there is a large medical need to reduce these side effects. And we aim to educate the immune system to tolerize the transplanted kidney and then be able potentially to, to take away or reduce the dose of immunosuppressive treatments. So what we are using is, is antigen from the donor and cells from the patient. And the plan is to give a prophylactic treatment with recipient cells exposed to donor-specific antigens 
to tolerate the transplanted organ uh, on the recipient. The development is also progressing here. We have the same platform as we have developed for IDO8. This year is very much focusing on the acceleration of this development program. Uh, and we are now making the adaptation of transplantation indication into the platform. We have created a very strong advisory board, but also now collecting preclinical safety data. Next year and the year ahead, we'll move towards preparing for clinical trial also for this indication. Autoimmune diseases, that is a very big amount of diseases and we are in a project looking to which are the ones that is most uh, accurate for the treatment with our cell therapy. And we are here also very open to discuss specific collaborations with uh, companies acting in the specific therapeutic areas. Key activities for this year, I have mentioned that we are preparing everything for the clinical trial. That is the key project for the company. If you look into IDOT, we are accelerating the development. We are making the adaptation of technology and we also start in preclinical studies for IDOT. And we are also discussing how to best utilize this technology clinically uh, in the day-to-day -day transplantation environment. That is also a very key thing. Another important thing for us right now is also to extend our efforts in the business development and partnership discussions. We see a quite big interest uh, in different uh, companies and also academias to look into what we're doing and to uh, move this development of the projects further. Uh, a, a very important part of, uh, of the development of, of this kind of product is to have the right contacts and have the right scientific knowledge, but also giving an input from the clinic. We have here a broad and new uh, advisory board uh, we have added uh, also transplantation specialists into this during the year. So if I summarize my presentation, we have a well advanced project with a clear strategy ahead. Uh, we have a proprietary technology uh, with patent protection if approved until 2040, which gives us a lot of benefits for the future. We have a strong partner for high quality large scale production in Radboud University Medical Center in Holland. We aim at clinical readiness for IDO8 and this year and be able to start the clinical trial. We are also looking for the time being for partnerships for further development of our technologies for the future. So to all of you, thank you very much for listening to this introduction to IDN. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Anders. Um, what interest have you seen so far in your technology? Uh, in general, very high interest on the technology as such. I mean, to create tolerance. I mean, this is uh, a very exciting uh, thing for all immunologists. If you look into it scientifically, if we then also add the benefit of also making this a treatment that also works clinically, I think all can understand that this would be a revolutionize uh, the treatment of, of these patients that has a high medical need. And could you tell us a bit about the competitive landscape for IDO8? Uh, yes, I can do. Uh, as I said in my presentation, the the standard of care treatment is uh, replacement therapy or substitution therapy with clotting factor 8. This is what they're missing. Uh, and uh, when that doesn't work today, uh, they get other treatment instead with a higher price, but not really targeting the same as the factor 8 treatment. So I would say that uh, the, the idea with taking the patients that have created neutralizing antibodies uh, with the treatment and instead treat them with our technology and then be able to continue with all patients, hopefully, with factor eight would be a, a very good scenario for the future because the, the idea was to start to treat with factor eight and we will give 
potential the opportunity to do, to do that. Mm. And uh, what would you say are the most important uh, activities in 2021? Uh, the most important thing is to get things ready uh, to start a clinical trial and, and that is also the question we get out there when we talk about technology. Uh, yes, this looks great. When can you tell us the numbers? So, so we get the feeling that uh, partners and also all interested, uh, clinicians, uh, patients, uh, wants to get the information on, on if this works or not. And we are getting closer and closer. So this is a very exciting year for us, I should say. Yeah, very exciting. And uh, thank you for coming here today, Anders. Thank you, Olivia.